Hey everyone, welcome back to Brush and Bubbles and another painting tutorial. Today we are going to be painting this landscape scene. Now the lovely thing about this painting is you can completely change up your colours, you don't have to follow along with what I'm doing, but I will be breaking this down into step by steps so you can all follow along from home. We're going to be starting with our background and the top of our sky and then blending it down into more of a sunset kind of shade. I'll then be showing you a few techniques on how you can add in the clouds if you want to and then to finish off we'll be adding in our silhouettes with our lavender. So like always please feel free to make these paintings your own, you don't have to follow along with the composition I've done, you can always turn your canvas around and paint in landscape and like I mentioned you can really feel free to change up the colours as well. And although we're all painting the same subject, everyone's creations are going to look completely different. So please don't worry if yours isn't looking like mine. This is just a chance for you to relax, to unwind, to get a little bit creative, and to let your personalities really shine through. I always say as well that if ever in doubt, just make your painting super abstract. As long as you're enjoying the process, that's all that matters. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the tutorial and I'll be talking you through exactly what you'll need to create this at home. In front of me I have my canvas, I've got two different size paintbrushes, a medium square shaped brush and then a smaller pointy one, some kitchen towel to dab my brushes on, a glass of water, palettes to pop all of my paints in and my acrylic paints. Like always I'll be showing you which paint colours I'm personally going to be using for my painting but as always feel free to use any shades and colours that you wish. So I'm going to be using white, blue, purple, yellow and black paint for my painting. We're going to start by creating the background. So this is going to be the sky. I'm going to start with my painting going from more of a blue shade then down to more of a purple kind of lilac colour and then blending it down into more sort of sunset shades. So I'm going to go for more of a sort of light yellow tone. And then we're just going to leave the bottom section blank because this is where our silhouette is going to be of our lavender and our grass. So I'm going to start at the top of my canvas. So just picking up my medium paintbrush, I'm just going to dip it in the water just to loosen up the bristles. And then moving over to my palette, I'm just going to mix up that colour now. So I'm going to start by using quite a lot of white as my base. I'm just scooping up a large amount and moving it over to a different dish in my palette. And then to this, I'm just going to gradually start adding a little bit of blue at a time. I'm giving it a good mix until I'm happy with the colour. So you might want to go a little bit more bright and vibrant with your paint, in which case you just need to add more of the colour that you want. Or if you want to be more pastel, you can just have more white as your base. It's totally up to you. So I'm just going to keep adding a little bit more blue until I'm happy with the colour for the top section of my sky. Once you're happy with the shade that you've mixed up, I would just add a couple of drops of water into this mixture, give it a good stir, just to allow the paint to become a little bit more fluid when we go to painting it onto our canvas. Whenever you're ready, we're gonna move on to the fun bit. So we're just gonna paint this shade at the top section of our canvas. So I'd focus it mostly towards the top, sort of two inches of the sky. And like always, you can be quite choppy if you want to with your paintbrush. You can get a little bit of texture in there with the paint. You can be quite thick with the paint as well if you want to. Or if you want more of a smooth kind of texture, you can just glide the paintbrush backwards and forwards along the canvas, moving it up and down until you're happy with that section. So just spend a moment now just filling in that whole section again just bringing it down a couple of inches so we're going to be blending our next colour into it and I'd also just remember while you've got this paint on your brush just to carefully paint the sides and the top of the canvas as well just wherever this paint would naturally wrap around it just so at the end our canvas looks lovely and finished. So what I want to do now is I just want to darken up the very top section of the sky and I like to blend this while the paint underneath is still wet. So I'm not going to wash off my brush, I'm just going to keep that colour still on my bristles. But I'm just going to pick up some pure blue 
with the brush. And while the paint underneath is still wet, I'm just gonna start applying this paint on top of that top section, just to create more of a darker section at the very top of the canvas. And I quite like how it goes a bit streaky as well, while it blends in with the paint underneath. So if you want to, you can just sort of add that darker shade to the top section of your canvas, just to symbolize where sort of dark areas of the sky would be. And a little tip I have, if you're struggling with the blending, it's nice just to apply the paint and then just spend a moment just dragging your brush straight across the canvas and back again until that paint is nice and worked in to the previous shade underneath it. And this is the lovely, relaxing, therapeutic part of painting. Once you're happy with that section, we're just going to give our brush a wash in the water. We're now going to move on to mixing up our next shade. So what I want to do is I want to mix in a little bit of purple into this colour. So I'm just going to pick up some of this lighter blue that I had as my first shade and I'm moving over to a different dish in my palette. And then to this, I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of purple at a time. Be careful that you're definitely picking up the purple because the purple and the black do look very similar in the palette. So just pick up a little bit of purple and mix it into that blue. Again, I would add a couple of drops of water into this paint as well and give it a good mix. We're now going to blend this new colour up into our previous colour. So what I like to do is I just like to paint this just underneath that previous shade that we've got. Get all of that paint off your brush, work it into the canvas, just backwards and forwards streaks. And then when you haven't got that much paint left on your brush, you can go in and fill in this little gap, again, just backwards and forwards motions. And then the way we want to blend it is we just want to gently push our brush down and then overlap that previous colour again, backwards and forwards motions with your brush just overlapping that line just to blend it out slightly so you don't get a stark contrast between the shades. So I'm just going to bring this more lilac tone down a little bit as well. I'd say probably about an inch or half an inch down your canvas just so we can blend our next colour up into it. What we want to do next is just darken up this colour a little bit by adding a small amount of purple back into it. So I'm just going to pick up the purple gradually and give it a good mix until I'm happy with the shade. We just want a more vibrant purple colour now. Just introduce a drop of water to it, give it a good mix. And then whenever you're ready, we're going to move back over to our canvas and do exactly the same thing again. So just focusing this new colour underneath that previous one. Dragging your paintbrush across the canvas bringing it down about an inch, an inch and a half. And then whenever you're ready, you can just close in that gap just by carefully and lightly dragging your paintbrush across the canvas, overlapping that previous color just with backwards and forwards motions until it's lovely and blended. We're now going to give our brush another really good wash in our water because the next colour we're going to move on to is adding some white to our canvas. So just make sure all of that purple is off your brush. So with this white paint, what we want to do is we just want to create a little section of neutral shade just so that we can have a gradient between our purple and our yellow. So I'm just picking up a small amount of white paint with my medium brush and I'm just going to focus this underneath that purple colour just like we've been doing before. Just getting all the paint off your brush and onto the canvas. And again, once you've not got as much paint on your brush, just go ahead and fill in this gap and it will start to smudge in with that purple and it will make it more of a sort of hazy, a hazy like look. If you just focus a little moment of dragging your paintbrush straight across the canvas all along that area, it should turn into quite a nice ombre effect. 
I think the, the, the thing that people struggle with here is just being afraid to bring that white colour up into the purple. But don't be afraid because the paint underneath is wet. So essentially all we're doing is mixing up a new colour on the canvas. And I'm really only pushing down very lightly with my brush. As soon as you're happy with that blend, we're just going to give our brush another wash in our water. And all we're going to do now is pick up some more of our pure white and just add a little strip of pure white paint just in this area here. So I would just give your brush another wash in the water just because we want to make sure that there's no purple left on the bristles. Moving back over to our palette, we're going to mix up a really, really light shade of yellow. So I'm just going to pick up a scoop of my white, moving it over to a different dish. And I'm just going to gradually add a little bit of yellow at a time. Give it a mix until I get a nice pastel yellow shade. Taking this yellow colour, we're just essentially doing the same thing again. So we're just going to focus this underneath that white section we've just painted. Dragging it backwards and forwards, bringing it down slightly. And then again, as soon as you've got most of the paint off your brush, you can very gently overlap some of that white. Now I'm gonna move on to the last shade for our background. So I'm just gonna darken up this yellow even more just by adding some more of the bright yellow into it, giving it a good mix just to make a slightly brighter tone. When you're happy with your shade, we're just gonna add this to the bottom section of our canvas. Now this is gonna be mostly covered up by our silhouette, but I do just think it's nice to see some of these bright tones peeping through some of the grasses and reeds and lavender so just focus this at the very bottom you can even bring it down all the way to the base of the canvas if you want to and again just do the same technique of blending it into that more pastel shade of yellow i would now just give your medium brush a good wash in your water we're going to move on now to adding a few clouds into our sky. So this is an extra, you don't have to do it. If you're really happy with how your background is looking, I would just skip the cloud section. But if you do want to have a go at doing the clouds, I'm just gonna show you how to do that now. So picking up our smaller brush and moving back over to our palette, we're just gonna mix up the color for our clouds. So you have a couple of options here. You can either just use pure white for this, or you can mix up a different shade. I think I'm going to mix up a sort of darker tone of purple for my clouds. So I'm going to start with scooping up some white as my base. And then I'm just going to start adding a little bit of purple to it. I'm going to mix it in, but I want a darker tone of purple than what I've used so far on my canvas. Now the nice thing about painting clouds is they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. What I like to do is almost just dab my paintbrush onto the canvas in a sort of very shallow triangle-like shape. You can be quite thick with your paint. I like to sort of peter it out a little bit. I might even have wisps underneath. I have another smaller sort of elongated triangle shape. If you want to, you can always give this a practice on a piece of paper first. But whenever you're ready, we're just going to take some of this shade and we're just going to move over to our canvas. And I like to keep the clouds quite low in the sky. So I'm going to focus them on this sort of middle section here. Again, I'm just using sort of a little dabbing technique. You can be quite abstract with these. But I'm just keeping that sort of very elongated triangle like shape as a sort of reference to how I want my clouds to look.
you can have as many as little as you want so I'm just going to have a few different shapes and sizes just dabbing bristles of the brush you can almost wisp it out just by almost brushing the bristles outwards to create little lines Just spend a moment adding in however many clouds that you want. And I would always suggest starting smaller because they naturally get a little bit bigger and bigger as we change the shapes of them. What I'm going to do now is just darken up this purple shade even more. So I'm just going to pick up some more of my pure purple. I'm just going to move it to a corner of this lilac shade. Give it a good mix. And then with this colour, we're just going to focus this darker shade. Again, just using a sort of dabbing, dashing technique towards the bottom section of our clouds, just to add a little bit of depth. Again, these are quite abstract so I wouldn't worry too much about it you just want to gently add this sort of darker tone in there just to add a little bit of shadow almost if you want to you can always do a little dance between the shades and pick up some of your previous shade and add it back in and it's quite nice to be quite thick with your paint when you're doing this as well And then if you want to, you can just dash off this excess paint from the brush. Just so you've still got some purple on it as the undertone. But you can just then pick up a tiny, tiny amount of white paint. And if you want to, you can just add a tiny little dab of this to the top section of the clouds. Just to add a little pop of highlight. I like to be quite abstract with this. Don't overthink it. You just want little dabs of the white just to add some form of highlight to the top of them. And then when your paintbrush gets quite dry, you can almost just fluff it out a little bit just by using a dry paintbrush just to add a little bit more of a blended like texture within the clouds. What we're now going to do is just move on to creating the strip at the very bottom of our canvas which is where our ground is going to be so i would just wash off your small brush and then moving over to our palette we just want to add a couple of drops of water into our black paint so i would add about three or four drops give it a good mix just to make more of an inky like consistency and whenever you're ready we're just going to paint just this very bottom section of our canvas 
just with the black paint. Now don't worry about being too neat or tidy because we're going over this, it's just to add our first layer of where our silhouette will be. And I would just wrap it around the sides and also paint the bottom of the canvas as well. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to start creating some of the grasses and reeds within the bottom of our painting. So again, I would just add a couple more drops of water to your paint because we really want it to be nice and fluid just because it allows it to become a little bit easier to paint sort of these dashes and flicks to represent all of the foliage. So what I would do is prepare your brush, you just pick up your black paint, just make sure you haven't got too much on there, you can just dash them off on the side of your palette. And then moving over to the bottom section of your canvas, what you can start to do is start from the base that we've just painted and just using the very, very top of your paintbrush, you can even rest your palm down on your table, is just start doing little sort of dashes and flicks going upwards. Now, the lighter you touch with your paintbrush, the thinner these are gonna be, but also it's really important to make sure that your paint isn't too thick. So if you're trying this and it's it just looks too thick and it's getting a bit sticky, just remember to add that water back in and as long as you're giving it a really, really good mix in there, it should help you to create this effect. So again, just starting from the base, I'm just going to very carefully, just pushing the very, very top of my paintbrush down, just doing little crisscrossing motions. I'm just going to very carefully just start building this up. And it's quite nice to have quite a few long ones, you can have some shorter ones just start getting used to this technique and then just add more paint to your brush whenever you feel like you need to and just remember to add more water to your paint whenever you think like it's getting dry. So this whole bottom section here is going to be really really covered and then what we want to do is we just want to start adding longer strips because then this is where some of our lavender will sit on top of so you can almost do longer ones swooping up into the sky, almost overlapping where the clouds are, if you've done the clouds. I know that this is the scary bit because it's now painting black paint all over our lovely background, but once it all comes together, it looks really effective. And don't worry if your reeds and your grasses are thick because we can be really abstract with this. I would just spend a moment just filling in this whole bottom section. You might want them all the same sort of length. You might want to have a dip in it so it looks a little bit like a valley. But I would just make sure that you're bringing some of them up quite high so we can have our lavender sitting on top of some of the higher ones as well. So just take your time adding in all of these grasses and reeds to the bottom of your canvas. Again, I cannot stress enough the importance of adding the water into the black. It really helps you get that nice, thin, crisp line. And you almost want to use your brush a little bit like a chopstick. So you're really only touching the very tip. I think it's important to remember to crisscross them, make sure they look nice and natural. They're not all completely straight sticking up. You can just start adding all of the different layers. As you can see, I'm sort of adding the paint to my brush, going into my canvas, and I'm doing quite a few of these little flicks up with the brush before I reload the paintbrush. So I just want to make sure this bottom section is nice and filled in. So once you've got your grass in there, what we're going to do is just make sure we're preparing our brush with our black paint. So I just like to dash off any excess onto the side of my palette so that my brush comes into a nice point. 
and then picking some of your larger grasses that you've done, all we're going to do is just gently push the brush down next to that grass and almost just drag it along and hopefully the bristles of our brush will help us create the little sort of pods that we find on the lavender. So just pushing the bristles of the brush down, dragging it into that stem. Again, you don't have to be neat with this. We want it to look nice and natural. And what you can do is you can just pick a few of the grasses and the reeds that you've got in your painting and do exactly the same technique. So for some of the shorter ones, they might be a little bit smaller. And then for some of the bigger ones, they'll probably be the same sort of size as that. But feel free to sort of angle your canvas as well if you need to, if it's helpful. Just add a few of these little dashes and blobs just to some of your reeds, not all of them. Just pick a few of them. So this is your chance just to take a little step back from your painting. I would have a look at something else for a moment and then come back to it. Decide if there's anything else you want to add, if you want to add any more lavender, any more grass. But if you're happy, we just need to let our paintings dry. So as soon as you are happy with all of the details that you've added for your silhouette and your painting is lovely and dry, you have then completed your landscape masterpiece. Thank you all so much for joining us today and if you did have fun then don't forget to hit the subscribe button because you'll get a little notification every time we have a brand new painting tutorial go live. Thanks everyone and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye!